I want to try something a little bit different today. And you'll have to let me know if this is uh, interesting or useful or not. Because I'm in so much physical pain that the smart thing to do would be to just continue lying in bed and resting as I've been doing for several days. And yet, is there anything to be gained by exploring that um, by sort of stealing myself again? I don't want to say that. So that's the wrong, that's really the wrong approach. Um, it takes a lot of effort to sit upright. The pain in my spine is asking me to just lie down and just breathe and relax and not do anything. And yet, I also want to communicate. I want to communicate about the pain and while I'm experiencing that pain. So I don't take drugs. I don't take anything anymore. Um, I've been experimenting on and off with sobriety for quite a long time, and I'll go through periods of time where I'm totally sober, and that includes everything. That's coffee, that's nicotine, that's Advil, that's, you know, they're literally everything. Um, and then times when I will use drugs, and that could look like anything. It could be weed, which I don't use that often. It could be opiates and painkillers. It could be whether natural or prescribed, you know, I've, I've done uh, many, many, many different things under the sun over the years to try and manage my pain, you know, alcohol, you, you name it, uh, harder drugs, um, psychedelic drugs. It's, it's just, the list is just endless. Um, and anyway, so I'm just not, you know, right now I'm in a period of time where it's been a oh, couple of years that I have not taken anything and you know, I could, sure, I could take some drugs and not feel my pain as much and then be feeling really great and communicative and talkative and in a good mood and I could create amazing things and I could probably do that for several months and then I'd start burning out and because those things are not, um, they're not sustainable. This isn't what I wanted to talk about though. So for the point, point being is that I'm, I'm raw dogging it, life it being life. And um, to do that and to actually sit here and talk about it is not easy. Like, And it might not be advised. It might not be the, the most healthy or wise or suitable course of action. I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm really torn. I'm really torn between do I just sink completely inward and give up on all communication with the external world, people and everything, and um, just sit in my pain. And will I even be able to, oh, that's a tough one. Or should I try to, like I've been doing, to get up every day and take care of my body and eat food and try to exercise as best as I can and make an effort to create these videos on YouTube. And so it's essentially like, and it's, yeah, and of course I try to find the balance between those things as with everything in life, but the pain that I've experienced and have been experiencing for largely for 20 years, but especially bad uh, for 10 years where like I haven't had a single day in my life in the last 10 years that has, <laughs> this is fucked up, man. This is so fucked up. Like I have been in significant physical pain every second of every day for at least the last 10 years, but more than that. And um, really mostly for the last 20 years and have not been able to be present at all in like any real sense of the word. Um, so there's a huge dissociation that's happened. Um, and is it a tragedy? I don't know, a lot of things, I mean, Personally, yes. Personally, it's a tragedy that I've missed out on my entire adult life um, and have had to sort of dissociate from that. I feel, I feel that. Like, 
if I ever come out of this, I imagine there will be a massive like grief over what could have been and what would have been and should have been. Um, and a recognition that I was just doing the best that I could all along. Such a... <laughs> oh. You have to have compassion for yourself. And because it, <laughs> it is hard. Oh, it is hard. We're all feeling it now. Not everyone, but a lot of people. And, and the shit that we put up with on a daily basis to be here in this human life experience is, and in my case, it's like, well, where's the reward for that? We, I can't, it's wild to me. Like I seemingly put up with a constant negative experience. It's like 24 hours a day, even in my sleep, even in my dreams, not necessarily I don't know what's actually going on during those six or eight hours at night. Um, but usually by the time I'm awake, it's stressful as all hell. Just like just being in bed and having to get out of bed. Fuck. I really do not want to start crying on this video. I'm like it's in at the same time, on the one hand, you can totally sympathize with this because you've been there too. And on the other hand, it's like, well, there's that whole mentality of, wow, that's so self-indulgent and, oh, well, we all have it hard and I can't believe it. Oh, wow. The audacity to actually cry on camera and show it to people, right? It's like, I think that's kind of what we need at this point. I think we just need this like <laughs> gigantic public social cleansing because it, the amount of people that I imagine, I, it's like... I, uh, what's that word that they, they've they been using in this last decade, gas, or in the 2010s, gaslighting? There's just a massive collective social gaslighting of our own pain. It's like, it's got to stop, man. It's like, really? You think this is how it's supposed to be? We're supposed to be addicted to everything. Opiates, cigarettes, caffeine, uh, alcohol, you know, every other drug under the sun, work the internet, basically any given thing, you name it, we're addicted to it because if we stop doing that, we're just like sucked into this vortex or just like exploded into this, this galaxy of discomfort. Um, like, well, okay. You know, the crying is, is a thing for a reason, right? Like I, I, as probably most people who were raised as, um, boys, yeah, you're not, <laughs> You're not going to get away with that, with crying. I don't think so, you fucking, you fucking uh, wuss. <laughs> Coward, you pussy, you wimp. Um, toughen up, bitch. Toughen up. We got to make you strong for this world. Because <laughs> it's going to fucking destroy you if you're not strong. And, um, you know, fuck. That might work for some people. That did not work for me. And... Yeah, it made me wish that I had been raised amongst women because, and maybe that just speaks to my, like, my gender non binariness or my femininity or my queerness or my gayness or whatever. And I don't know how much that applies if you're, like, straight dudes watching this. I don't know. But it seems to reason that we all human beings have, like, the same basic underlying emotional capacity and needs and, like, you know... <laughs> Every so often I'll catch stuff on my social media feed where it's like, I don't know if this stuff is just meant to rile people up, but like a soldier who's like crying at the grave of a loved one or a fallen comrade and the comment saying like, what a wuss, like, why are they crying? That's despicable. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who's actually posting these things or if they, but I do believe they actually believe that. Cause like I've been indoctrinated with that kind of mindset. Like any emotion that you show is contemptible and despicable and like how could you you know to to open up open up that boundary to that weakness and you know leave yourself exploitable like yeah i mean if you're in a fucking battle like a literal war i get it and 
And it totally does feel to me like I'm in all kinds of like under the surface, spiritual, psychological, inner battles or inner conflicts. Um, and like right now, my actual body. Okay, well, this is not a good example because supposedly I have a medical condition where my body is like tearing itself apart from the inside. Okay, maybe not the best example, but I'm just going to go with it anyway. Like my actual body is fine. And truly in this exact moment right now, it is okay. Like, sure, I can't take a full breath because the way that my body is in pain and constricted, it's that's too much. It's overwhelming for me. I can't do it. But with the little breathing I can do, like one breath just went by there and I'm still here and I'm still okay. So I'm not actively engaged in a life or death situation. And so it should be okay to release some of that. That's like crying seems like a, like a release valve or a pressure release. Um, and I've been conditioned not to do that for so long that I held it all in and my body kind of got really weird and jagged and kind of broke. So most, even when I do try to cry most of the time, it comes out like coughing and like choking and it's not like a river flowing. It's like, <laughs> it's like smashing rocks and like sparks coming out. It's very, it's electric, you know, it has, it's not that when you see people sobbing and crying and they're just blubbering and yeah, good for them though. Goals, am I right? Like that's a goal to be able to cry smoothly, naturally and cathartically. So yeah, I think I am talking for 12 minutes according to the little timer. And we're getting to that point where I have to think about this. What am I doing here? <laughs> Because on the one hand, yes, I do want to create longer videos and um, I feel like I'm in too much pain to actually make a video that's of the quality that I would want to. Yeah, because I'm just talking to avoid the pain. That's why I'm talking so much. And not really breathing. Because when I feel my body, like <laughs> the muscles and ligaments and tendons um, and joints around my spine, for example, it's like when I try to breathe into that, the, the burning and the stabbing and the, the dry heat and the jagged sensations are the electricity. Um, notice there's not a lot of like water imagery in there, which is why I think crying would be so useful. Um, to wash and balance that. Oh, but at the same time, like, I just want to, I'm so, it's not that I'm angry, but I just want to, I just want to destroy myself because whatever that is, whatever that pain represents, um, or whatever it, it's caused from or originates from, is something that must be so unwanted or so disgusting or gross or revolting that when we are made to feel as though 
we are disgusting. We are revolting. We are gross. We are um, despicable. And when the energy that's directed towards us from our supposed community that is supposed to protect or help or communicate or What is it that we, what is the agreement actually? What is the social agreement, to be honest with you? You know, you, you, you either try to conform to that and reap the rewards, or you try to be yourself and get thrown to the wolves. Um, the wolves being other people. <laughs> we are the wolves. Like the wolves that are in nature are I don't know, man. I've seen them up close and I have nothing but good things to say about those wolves. But yeah, they could be a little scary. They could be a little intimidating. Um, when I was a kid, I definitely had like, <laughs> there was a point in which I had these nightmares, not nightmares, but like I was awake at the time, but I'd be falling asleep getting ready for bed and I would imagine that these wolves were coming from the woods out that I could see from my window and they would come in the middle of the night and they would climb up the wall. I, uh, my bedroom was on a second story of the second floor of the house. They would climb up the wall, break in through the window, slink down on the floor, climb up over the bed and bite and attack and eat my feet and then they would just devour my entire body um, because I'd be lying there and I'd have my feet out from under the covers so they were exposed so I would tuck my feet under those covers as a protective shield against those imaginary wolves and um, and then I was fine but I've, I'm sort of lost at this point just because I don't know exactly why, but I think there's much deeper trauma um, from the time that I was around that age, like age two, age three, um, and the sort of horrific nightmares that I'd have, some of which involved the woods um, and, and far more ominous entities that were there, which were much larger, much looming, much, much larger than any wolf or any human or anything like that, very dark. Um, that's something that I still don't know what it is or what it represents or haven't worked through that. But, sorry, something is clicking in my ear. I don't know what that is.